Welcome to Sportcast LA, a brand new podcast series that covering variety of sport in America and around the world. Today we have Wesley with us covering Major League Baseball news. I know very little about baseball, so hopefully me or maybe you will learn something from him. So stay tuned. Welcome to our very first episode of Sportcast LA, Off the Bench Baseball Series. Today we have Wesley with us covering the news of baseball. So Wes, to begin with, as an introduction, tell us a little bit what baseball is and why is it so popular and important in America. So baseball is a really simple game. It's, it, goes it goes down, down to, to almost caveman roots. It's a ball and a bat. So really simple, really easy to understand. You know, there's a lot of rules that go with it, but the basic premises are very, very simple. Now, I would say it's really popular in America, probably because with every step in American history since like the 1850s, baseball has kind of had a significant role and it's been more popularized. So you take a look at World War II, a lot of veterans were baseball players, professional baseball players. Uh, they served in war and then they came back and played some more baseball. The civil rights movement, Jackie Robinson was a huge influence on that. So with things throughout American history, we see baseball playing a huge role. And I think that's why it's really popularized in America. And it's spread all over the world too. You know, people in Japan, Cuba, uh, you see the Little League World Series. A couple years ago, there's a team from Uganda. It's a really good sport, uh, and it's starting to spread all over the world, and it's not just focused in America, so it's pretty mm. exciting. I see, I see. Um, I know that in America, they have a professional league called Major League Baseball. Yes. And like, how does that league work? Like, how many teams they are? Like, how do they go to like, play off? Or... Right, so since the beginning of Major League Baseball, um, there weren't many teams, but every few years, they'll add an expansion team. So right now, currently in 2016, there are 30 teams um, and two leagues. So there's the National League and then there's the American League. The National League has 15 teams and the American League has 15 teams. Uh, and then within each league, there's three divisions. So the National League has the National League Central, the West and the East, and the American League has those same uh, divisions as well. Wow. So is that a difference between National League and American League? Or is that they separate by geographically? Or how do they... No, it's not separated geographically. It's more of a historical difference. Right. Um, so the, Nash the American League was the first league mm -hmm. that was kind of created as an organized league. And in the early 1900s, a couple guys got together and they were like, well, there's money in baseball. We want to start our own league. So they started the National League. And so for a couple of years, those two teams competed against each other, or those two leagues competed against each other to mm -hmm. raise support. Mm -hmm. And eventually, owners were like, we can make more money if we merge together. So the two leagues merged together, and that's now why we have the World Series. Uh -huh. So out of, out of the 30 teams, I know that the baseball season just began, and like, um, what do you think of this season then? I'm really excited for this season. I think it has a lot of potential to be uh -huh. um, one of the better seasons in recent years. Um, we, we're only a week into the season, but we see a lot of cool things already happening. Uh -huh. um, right now, there's a shortstop for the Colorado Rockies, rookie. His name's Trevor Story. In four games, he's hit six home runs. Um, and so he's off to a crazy start, something that we've never seen, especially from a rookie. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really, really impressive. I see. It's like, you have any predictions on this year? Yeah, I've got lots of good predictions. Uh, I have them all right here on my helpful computer. I posted them on Facebook a couple days ago, and I posted them on one of them on that uh, 
baseball forum mm -hmm. and I got a lot of feedback a lot of people angry at me because of my predictions <laughs> uh, but I think I think I got a lot of good ideas here uh -huh. um, but you know people are more than welcome to disagree with me uh, so for the division winners in the American League uh, I have the Tampa Bay Rays in the AL East a lot of people are kind of surprised by this because the Rays aren't the favorite um, especially when there's the Toronto Blue Jays and the Boston Red Sox and even the Yankees have been playing a lot better the Orioles look like a pretty good team too but I picked the Rays I think they're a more complete team overall uh, so I think they have a really good shot to win that division um, the American League Central I have the Kansas City Royals mm -hmm. uh, which might come as a shocker to a lot of people because I'm a Tigers fan but I think the Royals are a better team overall so they are in the same division they're in the same team. division as my team yeah wow. um, so I think I think the Royals will win that and they're the defending World Series champions as well mm -hmm. so I think they have a really good shot uh, American League West, uh, a lot of people again have the Houston Astros winning that division, but I actually have the Texas Rangers. Uh, they have a really great team, a lot of people coming back, back healthy uh, for the first time in a couple years, so they have a really good shot as well. And then for the National League, um, in the Eastern Division, I have the Washington Nationals winning. Uh, not too big of a surprise there, other than a lot of people got angry with me not picking the Mets. Uh, everybody will argue Mets have best pitching staff in baseball, which is hard to argue against. Mm -hmm. It's really young, good core, um, good potential there. But I don't think their hitting's good enough um, to compete with the Nationals. Uh, the Nationals have their own set of problems, but I think they're a better team overall than the Mets. Um, National League Central, I have the Pittsburgh Pirates. Another big shocker because the Cubs are in that division, and everybody's picking the Cubs to win the World Series this year, which is crazy because the Cubs haven't won the World Series since 1908. A long time. Um, they were close last year. They were really close last year. They made it to the National League Championship Series, which is the round right before the World Series. Mm -hmm. uh, but they just couldn't quite get there. A lot of people are picking them this year, but I think the Pittsburgh Pirates have a better overall team. Mm -hmm. And then in the National League West, I'm going to get a lot of flack from this, especially because I'm in L.A. Um <laughs> I have the San Francisco Giants winning that division over the Dodgers. Um, the Giants, it's a common theme. They won the World Series in 2010, 2012, and 2014. So it's an even year. It's 2016. So I think they have a really good shot again. And their team is incredible. Good pitching, good hitting. They play the game the right way. Uh, and then in each league, there's two wild cards. So the American League wild cards had the Detroit Tigers coming out of the AL Central, and the other one, the other um, wild card, had the Houston Astros coming out of the American League West, and then wild cards in the National League, I have the Dodgers and the Cubs. So I do have the Cubs and Dodgers making the playoffs, but I don't have them winning the World Series. Mm. So I see. Yeah. Now, obviously, in 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 LA here, we have two teams. Yes. Dodgers and the Angels. Um, I know that like a lot of people, you know, love Dodgers and Angels both side. Like, why do you think that they always say that Dodgers will win the World Series every year? They every say the year. same thing. Like, what, what make them so good and what make them so bad that they cannot win the, the series? Well, the thing the Dodgers have that's really impressive is they have a good number one starting pitcher, and that's going to be Clayton Kershaw. Mm -hmm. uh, every year he shows up. He's always a competitor for the Cy Young Award. I think he's won three, and he's only like 26 years old. Wow. So he's really young. I think he's the best pitcher in baseball. Um, so they start there. Uh, they added a few pitchers as well this offseason. Um, and then their offense is always usually pretty good as well. Uh, so again, you know, the Dodgers, they have a great chance, but it seems like every year in the playoffs, they just can't get it done. Mm -hmm. they, a lot of times they run into the Cardinals or they'll run into the Giants or one of those teams and they'll get knocked out of the playoffs. So they, <laughs> I don't know if it's a psychological thing, but those teams typically take out the Dodgers. But they have a solid team. Side. Yeah. Both Angels and Dodgers, they have a solid team here. They just cannot make it that far. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you mentioned earlier about like the, like the healthy, like being healthy in the league. And like, I know that they play a lot of games. Like usually, like one season, how many games they play? Just the regular season. Uh, just the regular season. There's 162 games. Wow, 162. In how many months they finish all this? Uh, they start playing. Well, they start spring training in March. Uh huh. Um, and that's getting their bodies warmed up, and then the season starts April, and they play if all the way until September, uh, and then playoffs start in October. 
Um, so if you make the playoffs, you're playing another, you know, quite a few games, especially if you make it to the World Series. So from April to September, they already play 162 games. They play 162 games. It's, it's hard to stay healthy. Yeah, <laughs> it's very hard so... to stay healthy. They're traveling a lot, uh -huh. a lot of, lot of damage to uh -huh. their bodies. Yeah. Awesome. So that when, when you look at the team, each team, like, what is it important? The coach, the player, or the teamwork? Like, what is the most essential things or the most important thing that you think that will make a great team? Well, like with all sports, they're all kind of connected. So obviously you want to have a really great coach, a great, great manager um, to make those hard decisions. Like if a pitcher's really struggling, the manager needs to go out there and be like, hey, I'm taking you out of this game. We're going to bring in somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, or if the pitcher's doing pretty well, but he gave up a base hit, like what does the manager do? The manager tells the players to bunt. Like it's a big strategy game. The manager mm -hmm. is the strategy master of the game. So he's really important. You want to have a guy that's pretty smart. Uh -huh. um, with the players, obviously you want to have good players because they're the ones that implement that strategy. Uh -huh. So if the coach says, hey, I need you to bunt this ball down the third base line, the player's like, okay, I'm going to do that. You need a player that's capable of doing that. Uh -huh. um, so the players, they have a very important role in, in the game as well. It's very interesting to know. Obviously, I don't watch enough baseball to understand the manager or the coach role. But most of the time, I just saw them minding their own business and chewing bubblegum by, by the player bench. And for the player, I'm sure that they train so hard, spending a lot of time preparing for the game. But seems like they're usually out there for a really short amount of time on the field. It's like, I don't know. Like it, 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 for me, it feels like I, I'm a soccer fan. Mm -hmm. So that the soccer player, they are on the field, they play 90 minutes. You know, they non-stop. It's not like baseball, you take turns and yeah. go out there. You know, it, it, so that's why probably I'm not a baseball fan. You know, I like more interaction, more actions. And from the perspective, most probably I am wrong. But how I feel about baseball is it is boring. So what is your take and how do you convince other baseball is not boring? Game. <laughs> well, a lot of people tell me, because I, when I tell people I love baseball, they're like, why? It's so boring. And so it's a common common complaint with the game. Uh -huh. uh, one of the things, I mean, I don't think there's anything more exciting than in any sport than a home run being hit. Uh -huh. uh, home run gets hit, fireworks go off, everybody's really excited, everybody stands up and cheers, claps, you high-five random people around you. Uh -huh. It's a really exciting thing. But also, you know, when we're talking about baseball we're talking about hitting we're talking about pitching these guys have been doing it since they were little um so obviously they have a lot of practice doing it but mm -hmm. one of the things you have to know about hitting is it's very very difficult to do like it might look easy sitting you know on the couch watching it like oh why couldn't you hit that it looked like it looked like a hype like a piece of cheese like coming at him but the thing is you know most pitchers throw in the 90 to 100 mile an hour range on an average fastball mm -hmm. so you know a lot of speed on there now the plate is only 60 feet six inches from the pitcher's mound so if a pitcher's throwing a 95 mile an hour fastball the batter has i think maybe three tenths of a second mm -hmm. to react and decide if they want to swing or not mm -hmm. like that's that's like that it's really fast they don't have much time um and so good hitters I don't know how they do it. They're just really impressive. They know how to react. They know where to put the ball. Um, when I was first started watching baseball, I thought players would just hit the ball and it would just go in a random direction. But as I've learned, players learn back control. They learn angles. They learn all these things so that they can learn how to hit the ball in different directions. Mm -hmm. So baseball is a very mathematical game. There's a lot of statistics involved. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also a very very much skill oriented game like if you don't have the skills you're not gonna do well at it like pitchers when they throw i don't know if you've ever seen a pitcher throw a curveball or something mm -hmm. sometimes a pitcher with a really good curveball he'll throw it and the ball will just go and it'll just dive at the last second and go mm -hmm. right underneath the bat mm -hmm. so the fact that a guy can make a ball this big like dance is really really impressive mm -hmm. so if you look at baseball for like the wonder of its little things like a really great pitch or a home run or even a really well-placed bunt it adds a lot more excitement to the game
Like usually, how long it lasts in one game? A game, <laughs> uh, you know, it depends. They usually, depending on the speed of play, uh -huh. uh, most of the time games go about two and a half to three hours. Um, I've sat at a game longer than five hours, though. Wow. Yeah, it goes into extra innings, so uh -huh. it depends. Uh, sometimes they're longer, but I love it, so that's what it to me. <laughs> And uh, probably the one last question yeah. is that you already predict that like, the teams that mm -hmm. will make it to the playoff and probably the World Series too. And like, how about like MVP? MVP. Uh -huh. Well, I actually didn't say who I had in the World Series. Uh -huh. My computer went off. Um, <laughs> so I had I on my post I put a uh, two World Series pick. Uh -huh. So I have my heart and my mind. Uh, <laughs> so in my mind, the one I really think is going to happen, even though I don't want it to happen because the Tigers aren't involved. Um, I have the Pirates over the Texas Rangers in five games. Wow. Um, it's a best of seven series, but I think the Pirates are a better team, so I think they'll take care of the Rangers. Uh -huh. And the Pirates have been really good the last four years. They've been one of the better teams in baseball, especially after, I don't know, 20 years of them just being awful. Mm -hmm. So these last four years, they've been really good. They've had a lot of pieces, a lot mm -hmm. of young pitching. So I mm -hmm. think they have a really great shot this year to win the World Series. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to MVPs, um, we're in Los Angeles and the greatest baseball player in the world plays in Anaheim down the street. His name's Mike Trout. I don't think there's any question that he's going to win a World Star, not a World Series, an MVP this year. Uh -huh. Really impressive ball player, can run the bases, hit home runs, play defense. He does everything. Uh -huh. And he's only 24 years old. Wow. And he's already won, uh, he's already won a, one MVP and he's finished second twice. Mm -hmm. So in three seasons, he just... He's such a good baseball player. I just can't believe it. Wow. And then in the uh, National League, uh -huh. I have uh, Paul Goldschmidt for the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh -huh. He's another one of those players that's just overall really good player. Uh -huh. um, he's first baseman, but he steals bases. He's fast. Um, he hits home runs, uh -huh. and he's a good defender. And for first baseman to steal bases, that's really rare because they're usually bigger bodies. Uh -huh. But he's a really impressive player, so I think he's got, he's got the chance to win the uh -huh. MVP this year. I know I say that, that last question. So how about rookies? Uh, any this year? Any in, like, any perspective? There's perspective? a lot of a lot of good. Last year there were a lot of good rookies. Last year was kind of the year of the rookie. So everybody was thinking, like, oh, I don't know if we'll ever have a rookie class quite like this again. Last year we had Chris Bryant, Carlos Correa, um, and a bunch of other guys come up and just take the league by storm. Mm -hmm. uh, this year there's another a couple of few guys that I think have a really great shot to be. Rookie of the Year, potential All-Stars, and eventually MVPs. Mm -hmm. um, the first one for the American League, I have Byron Buxton. He's an outfielder for the Minnesota Twins. Uh, yeah, he's been the number one uh, prospect for, I don't know, maybe four or five years. Uh, but he's finally getting up to the big leagues. He's fast. He has a little bit of pop in his bat. And great defender. So everybody thinks he's going to be a really great player uh, at the Major League level. Mm -hmm. And then for the National League Rookie of the Year, I have uh, this guy named Corey Seager. Plays for the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. Really great player. He's a shortstop, power, speed, defense. He's a big guy. He's like six foot three, six foot four. Wow. Um, for the shortstop position, that's that's a good size. Mm -hmm. um, and then I haven't talked about pitchers yet either. Um, there's a Cy Young Award, which is for the best pitcher in baseball. Uh, for the American League, I have Marcus Stroman. He's a pitcher for the Blue Jays. Mm -hmm. uh, young guy. Um, a lot of people kind of got onto me for this pick again because he is so young. Um, but his stuff is just dominating, good fastball, uh, a lot of life on that. So he's got a chance. And then the National League Cy Young, another young guy. He didn't pitch at all last year because he was hurt. Uh, he had to have Tommy John surgery. But his name's Jose Fernandez. Mm -hmm. He pitches for the Miami Marlins. And he is incredible. Um, he pitched a couple days ago against my Tigers. Tigers beat him. So that was exciting. Yeah. But it was his first loss in Miami mm -hmm. in, I think, over 30 starts. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's just a dominant pitcher, and he's really young. He's only like 23 years old. Uh, wow. Yeah, so a lot, lot of good young guys in baseball this season. Wow, that, that's good. That's awesome. It's awesome news. And, you know, it's, I don't know, like the rookies, is that like too much for them? 162 games. I'm still thinking of like, you know, for them to stay that yeah. healthy, stay strong for the whole season, it's not easy. You know, definitely, uh, it's a it's a it's a tough season for everybody for the first season, especially. Yeah. Um, so, um, any final thought for our first episode? Um, 
obviously I learned quite a few things already how the American League, the National League. And the teams that you name, most of them, I have no idea where they're from. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, I just thought, all right, yeah. And like, some of the names, like, of course, like, if you live in SoCal, Mike Trout, you will know it, Dodger, Angels, you know, that's all pretty much that I know about it. Um, any final thoughts on, on our very first episode? Yeah, speaking of the you know, last thing, the 162-game schedule, uh, a lot of times with rookies, what they'll do is they'll put them, especially if it's a pitcher, they'll put, in, put them on an innings limit. Um, so they'll say you're only going to pitch 150 innings this year. Uh-huh. Um, so they'll, that way they can kind of preserve their arm, kind of stretch them out. Uh-huh. Cause in the minors, that's usually about all they're pitching as well. Uh-huh. Um, so they, the pitchers, they put them on an innings limit for the player, like for the, um, position players. A lot of times they'll let them kind of figure it out. They'll throw them out there. If they're struggling, they'll bench them, but that's usually what they do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um. Again, any final thought for, for our, our audience? Yeah. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Um, uh-huh. I hope I was able to convince people why baseball is a really interesting <laughs> sport. Uh-huh. It's not as boring as it sounds. Uh-huh. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh-huh. All right. Um, I think one of the reasons I picked pick Wes for, for this baseball series is because like he loved the games. He's not just loved one team and bias on, on his opinions. Like he loved the games like overall mm-hmm. and I, I, I think that his opinion is the most unbiased that I ever heard of. <laughs> Thank you very much, Wes. Thank you.